Guess what, guys? It is August of 2020. And finally, 343 has fixed the hit registration in Halo 3. It's a miracle. This is my first game, just trying it out, playing through the game. And it's on my favorite map of all time, probably the pit. One of the best, most balanced map, I think, in the Halo Empire. Because it's just so symmetrical. Even on both sides, you got this sword room in the middle. And so this is my first experience playing with the fixed hit registration. And I find in this game that there really is improvement. I didn't play like a star in this game. I mean, I was very average, but it's a good analysis of my mistakes and my successes. So one of the things I did find here, like I said earlier, is that the shots that I hit with my BR in somebody's head actually did hit. Surprise, surprise. I mean, prior to this, there were a lot of games where you'd have to lead your shots, and even still, it didn't really feel like you were hitting enemies accurately. Like, that enemy right there, I killed before I got beaten down. You know, I hit him in the head a couple times, and he died, even though he's an elite, which elites are the worst. At least, my shots to his head were registering. They were accurate. So... I'm just glad to see that the game is playing better, because the maps in Halo 3 are some of my favorite Halo maps of all time. So, let's get to this specific game and talk a little bit about what's going on. I mean, this is a random match. I'm not listening to anyone's voices. I'm not communicating on the mic. So, we, as a team, miss a lot of opportunities here to try and take out the opponent, because we're not being very coordinated. Now, something that I've tended to do over time is be quite a lone wolf when it comes to games, you know, getting into the bad habit of chasing down enemy players when there's no support for them. You know, you end up running into a two-on-one, three-on-one situation. So positioning in Halo especially as being a team game is very, very important. And in this game, I have to constantly be reminding myself to get into my head a little bit so you understand what's going on. As somebody who is a casual player, but wants to improve, I'm constantly reminding myself, you know, work with your teammates. I'm not listening to them, I'm not hearing their voices, but I have to tell myself, you know, don't run out in the open by yourself. Always be aware of where your team is. You know, I see... One of my teammates going up that way, so I'm aware that that red elite is distracted. Here's a team in, in front of me. I can go for this guy. And I don't get the hits that I want, at least my teammate takes him out. So see, that's the key there. I'm not going into a three-on-one, two-on-one kind of situation. There's a lot of support around me. Right there is a good example. Took out an enemy. Now, I know there's two or three guys sitting back there. I don't want to venture out and get myself blown to bits. So I'm crouching here, trying to wait, seeing if they'll turn the corner. They don't. They go the opposite way. I'm not going to run up there. I mean, that's just a death trap. So I go for the sniper here, and I'm not a particularly great sniper. I tend to go for body shots and then try to hit somebody with a BR in the body afterward. A quick weapon switch to try to finish them off. For my skill level... I find that that's a better way to go. Now, having the sniper on the pit is definitely advantageous. There I go, body shot, get the BR, that's a better way for me to do it. Just with my current level of aiming ability. But back to what I was saying about having a sniper on the pit, you know, I, I've learned from some of the better players that you should never try to be predictable in Halo, right? And what so many people do is they take that sniper on the pit, and they go up top by the turret area, and they try to shoot guys from there. And that's fine. I mean, you're going to get a decent amount of kills, most likely, in a lot of scenarios that way. Because you have the upper ground and you can see, but it's just so predictable. 
You know, like if you're on a good team and they have played this map many times before, or they're a coordinated group, sitting up top by the turret with a sniper is just like the standard default way to do things. So when I get the sniper in this game, I try to move around a little bit. Oh, this is kind of funny. This is pretty funny. So I got the sword here. I'm going around. Boom. Like, I think I got Boltrude maybe three times in this game. I just didn't pull that trigger fast enough for the slice to get in there. Or somebody else had a brute shot, or a shotgun, or a mauler. And I just happened to be that dummy that just comes in there and was one millisecond too late. So I'm continuing to follow my teammates around here, not being right next to them. Otherwise, I'm putting myself in a position for a multi-kill to be coming my way instead of me executing one. But being close enough that I have a general understanding of where they are, where the enemies are, you know, it's just that overarching awareness in the back of your head, like what's going on on this map. And I think this is a game where we would have definitely benefited from some sort of verbal communication. Oh, that was just, on my part, missed it. You know, really should have gotten that one shot in and then gone for the beatdown, but I didn't get it. And that's some teammate helpfulness right there. You know, there was a guy backing me up, fellow soldier, a little far behind. Now here the overshield is just a huge advantage. Because I take out that guy, there's somebody behind me. Probably would have died if it wasn't for the overshield. And I get him too because I have a teammate who gets that sniper shot right in the body. And I'm there with the BR on the head. Five minutes remaining. This has been such a close game throughout. All, all tied up. Here's my sword buddy. What's up man? And here, I'm just not willing to be aggressive. I'm not sure if this was a good or a bad decision, to be honest. I just don't want to run in. I mean, I get him with a nice grenade. Look at that. I mean, I was doing some pretty decent damage from afar. Once again here, look at that. Full truth. Looking at what I could have done better and how I would have changed up the way I played this game... I wouldn't have spent time in the soul room trying to go around corners. I mean, I threw a lot of grenades at the corners to try to get those angles, which I think is a good strategy. But I probably spent too much time inside of that soul room in the hallways, assuming that I had the upper hand with the sword. And sometimes I didn't. Somebody else had a shotgun. Somebody else had a brute shot, so they had a mid-range weapon and they were able to get damage in before I could even get close. So yeah, I, I don't think I should have spent time assuming here I am with the sword, like I have the advantage here. This is a rocket hallway battle right here. Now I see somebody throws. Oh, here we go. I get that no scope. Really wanted the second one. And the reason why I brought out the sniper there was there was a regenerator, and I didn't want to be sitting there shooting some with a battle rifle, and then just healing, and then going back and forth, you know, rinse, repeat. That tactic really wouldn't have made much sense. I keep coming into this tunnel hoping there's an invis, and somebody's always got it. Really wanted camo at some point in this game, but never got it. Now here I'm trying to go around the back, hoping they wouldn't see me, and they were coming right my way. When I was first in that camo tunnel, my thought process was, alright, there's a couple enemies back there. Let me try to flank them from the outside. And my flanking strategy was a complete failure, because they walked right back to where I was. Now there I was just being way too aggressive in the rocket hallway. It's all tied up. This is when verbal communication between us would have been so important but again I didn't have my mic on so it's a scenario where we lose out on some really important moments here so it's still tied up I've got the sword I'm thinking you know what 
I'm gonna hope that I can sit in this hallway and draw my teammates in. And the problem was they ran out aggressively at the enemy. One on one on one until it's over. And there we go. So, you know, I found that uh, this game could have gone a lot better. But the pit is just a great map and I'm so glad that they fixed the registration on the BR and on really all the weapons.